Hey, if you want to know what Bitcoin is and how you can get it, how it can help you without floundering into the technical details, this is a video for you. Hey, it's Jim Parr from JimParr.com, and we teach you how to dominate the search engines all over with money-making ideas and awesome ideas and videos for you. So subscribe to my channel right now. Before you forget, put a thumbs up because you're going to like this video and leave your comments below. So Bitcoin, it will, this will explain how the system works and how you can use it for your profit, which scams to avoid. It will also direct you to the resources that help you store and use the, your first pieces of digital currency. So what is Bitcoin in a nutshell? The small wonder that Bitcoin emerged in 2008, just after the Occupy Wall Street accused big banks of misusing borrowers' money, duping clients, rigging the systems, charging boggling fees. Bitcoin's pioneers wanted to put the sellers in charge, eliminate the middleman, cancel the interest fees, and make transactions transparent to hack corruption and cut fees. They created this decentralized system, which is now Bitcoin, where you could control your funds and know what was going on. So Bitcoin has come far in a relatively short period of time. Obviously, we see what's going on recently with the big surge of Bitcoin and really how it, it, the price has gone up. The last I saw was around $16,000. So all over the world... Companies from jewelers to large jewelry chains in the U.S., private hospitals in Warsaw, accept currency. Billion-dollar businesses such as Dell, Expedia, PayPal, Microsoft do too. So websites promote it. Publications such as Bitcoin Magazine publish its news forums, discuss cryptocurrency, and trades it coins. So it has an application programming interface, what we call an API, a price index, and an exchange rate. Problems include, and you're thinking about it already, is thieves hacking accounts, high volatility, and transaction delays. So on the other hand, people in the third world countries may find Bitcoin more reliable channel to, for giving and receiving money. So what is Bitcoin in depth? It is it's the simplest, uh, as its simplest Bitcoin is either virtual currency or reference to technology. So it's a computer type currency. You can make transactions by wiring a check or cash. You can also use Bitcoin or what they call the BTC, where you refer the purchaser of your signature, which is a long line of security code encrypted with 16 distinct symbols and the purchaser decodes the code with his smartphone and to get your cryptocurrency. So put it another way, cryptocurrency is an exchange of digital information that allows you to buy and sell goods and services. The transaction gains its security and trust by running a peer-to-peer -peer computer network that is simple like Skype or BitTorrent or FileShare. So what is Bitcoin? It, you know, it is transactional properties are the following. So number one, it's irreversible. After a confirmation of a transaction, it cannot be reversed. Nobody, and I mean nobody, means nobody. Not you, not the bank, not the president of the United States, not your minor. Nobody can reverse that transaction. So if you send money, you send it, period. No one can help you if you sent your funds to a scammer or a hacker and they stole that from your computer. There is no safety net there. So that is one of the issues that is being looked at in Bitcoin. So number two is pseudonymous. So neither transactions or accounts are connected to real world identities. You receive Bitcoins on a so-called addresses, you know, those crypto encrypted addresses, which are randomly seeming and chains or what we call blockchains around 30 characters. So while 
it is usually possible to analyze a transaction flow. It is not necessarily possible to connect with the real world identity of users with those addresses. So number three is fast and global. Transaction is propagated nearly instantly in the network and confirmed in a couple of minutes. So since they happen in a global network of computers, they completely indifferent of your physical location. So it doesn't matter if I send Bitcoin to my neighbor or someone around the world. It really doesn't matter about the location. So number four is secure. Bitcoin funds are locked in a public key cryptography system. So it's like an, an image of crypto uh, code. Only the owner of the private key can send cryptocurrency. So strong cryptography and the magic of big numbers make it impossible to break the scheme, which is really good. A Bitcoin address is more secure than Fort Knox, believe it or not. Number five, permissionless. You don't have to ask anybody to use cryptocurrency. It's just the software that everybody can download for free. So after you install it, you can receive and send Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies and no one can prevent you or there's no gatekeeper, I should say. So what is a blockchain? It, blockchain, the creator of Bitcoin figured out a way to let two entities confidently trade directly with one another without the need to rely on all the intermediaries. So the key is mathematics. As long as we both trust in the math, we can be confident in the exchange to occur as expected. So Bitcoin uses public key cryptography and initiative approach to bookkeeping to achieve authorization and balance verification and prohibit double spending and delivery of assets and record in alterability. So, and it happens in a near real time at no cost. So cryptography ensures uh, the authorization. You need a private key to transact and your key is complex enough that it would take the best computer longer than the earth has existed to crack it. And in other words, it's essentially unhackable, which is really good for uh, crypto, uh, cryptocurrency and being a Bitcoin owner. So where can you find Bitcoins? First, we would recommend that you read in depth guide um, and study a lot of stuff about Bitcoin before buying Bitcoin, because there is a lot of scams out there. So you can get your first Bitcoins from any of the four places, a cryptocurrency exchange where you can exchange regular coins for Bitcoins or uh, which is like the BTC type of sense. Uh, resources are like Coinbase, local Bitcoins in the U.S. Um, and a Canadian uh, company uh, or, or local Bitcoins are in the U.S. and Canada. And then Bitbargain and Bitalicious is in the U.K. So um, there's even a Bitcoin ATM cryptocurrency uh, exchange where you can exchange Bitcoins for cash from another currency. So there's a lot of different stuff. Your best bet is are better or coin corner. And I'm going to put some of these links below in the video so you can go there and check them out. Uh, get your hardware wallet or whatever you're looking for. So a classified service where you could find um, a seller who would help you trade Bitcoins. That's what those types of resources are. So the definitive sites are like, uh, local bitcoins. Um, you could sell a product or service for bitcoins. Sites like uh, Purse. Um, and one thing to remember on this, bitcoin is notorious for scams. So before using a service, look for the reviews, study those previous reviews from customers and post your questions on the Bitcoin forum. So join that forum, join those Facebook groups so that you know what's going on. So how does Bitcoin work? Without getting into the technical details, Bitcoin works on a vast 
public ledger. It's called blockchain, which I mentioned earlier, where all confirmed transactions are included. So um, you have these so-called blocks, and each block enters the system. It is a broadcast of peer-to-peer computer network of users for validation. In this way, all users are aware of each transaction whenever they happen, which prevents stealing and double spending where someone spends the same currency twice. The process helps blockchain users trust the system. Unlike traditional currencies, which are issued by a central bank, Bitcoin has no central monetary authority. Instead, it's an underpinned peer-to-peer computer network made up of users, machines, you know, to the networks that underpin BitTorrent, a file sharing system like Skype, an audio video chat service. So Bitcoins are mathematically generated as the computer in this network executes the difficult number, the encrypted number, and crunching task, and the, then the procedure known as bit mining, which is something really good to, Bitcoin mining is good to study. The mathematics of Bitcoin system were set up so that you can become progressively more difficult to mine. So Bitcoins over time, and the total number that can be uh, ever mined is limited to 21 million. So there is a value on Bitcoin, and that's why the value goes up. So there is, therefore, there's no way a centralized bank to issue a flood of new Bitcoins to devalue the already in circulation, which is what they do with the dollar right now. So what is Bitcoin? Um, it, it's really, uh, to see how the system works, imagine someone called Alice who's trying out Bitcoins. She signed up for a cryptocurrency wallet to put her Bitcoins in. The Bitcoin wallets, there's three different applications that Alice could use. So a full client that is like a standalone email server that handles um, all aspects of the process without relying on the third party, party server. So a full client does everything. So that's that's one form of what she could use. So Alice would control her whole transaction from the beginning to the end by herself. Understandably, this is not for beginners. So make sure you start with one of these different systems like the lightweight client. This is a standalone email client that connects to your mail server for access to, to a mailbox. So this would store Alice's Bitcoins but it needs a third party owned server to access the network to make the transaction. Another one is web client. This is the opposite of full client and it resembles webmail. So it's totally relies on a third party server and the third party replaces Alice and operates her entire transaction. So you'll find wallets that come in five main types and I'm gonna leave those uh, different links below. I'll try to remember all these links to leave for you. So desktop, mobile, web, paper, and hardware. So each of these has its advantages and disadvantages. The most comprehensive digital guide uh, or wallet, how do I buy and sell stuff with Bitcoins? Here's the funny thing with Bitcoins there are no physical traces of them as dollars. So all you have is only recorded transactions between two different addresses, which with the balances that decrease and increase in the records that are stored on that blockchain. So to see how the process works, let's go back to the Alice story. Um, Example of a Bitcoin transaction. So here, Alice wants to buy Uh, use bitcoins to buy a pizza from Bob's Pizza. So she'd send him a private key, um, a private sequence of letters and numbers, which contains her source of transaction and coins in the amount and Bob's digital wallet address. And then the address would be another this time, the public sequence of letters and numbers. So Bob's Pizza scans the key 
with his smartphone to decode it. And at the same time, Alice's transactions are broadcast to all the other network participants called nodes. And on her ledger, and approximately 10 minutes later is confirmed. So through a process of certain technical business rules called mining, which I suggest you look up, this mining process gives Bob a score to know whether or not to proceed with Alice's transaction. So the transaction between Alice and Bob what it is completed and she gets her pizza and she's good. So what is mining? Mining or processing, keep the Bitcoin process secure and chronologically adding new transactions um, or blocks in those blockchains and keeping them in a query. So blocks are chopped off as each transaction is finalized, um, codes decoded and Bitcoins passed or exchanged like Alice did with their pizza. So miners can also generate new Bitcoins by using special software to solve the cryptography problems. This provides kind of a smart way to issue the currency and also provides an incentive for people to mine. So the reward is agreed upon and everyone in the network, uh, but it's generally 12.5 Bitcoins as well for a fee, kind of like PayPal charges a fee. So by using and sending transactions, you're gonna pay a fee. But to, to prevent the inflation and to keep the system manageable, there can be no more than a fixed total of 21 million Bitcoins or BTCs in circulation by the year 2040. So there's no more Bitcoins going out. There's 21 million and that is it. So. Uh, this gets increasingly harder to solve. And what do you, you know, what can you do to protect your Bitcoins? So there are four pieces of advice to help your Bitcoins go further. And as you do with a regular wallet, you only store small amounts of Bitcoins on your computer, mobile, server, and everyday uses to keep the remaining part of those funds in a safer environment. So back up your wallet on a regular basis and encrypt your wallet or smartphone with a strong password to protect it from thieves like thumbprint recognition, face recognition with your phone. That's why phones are becoming more difficult to open. Um, so you want to prevent it from key against key logging uh, hardware or software. So Store some of your Bitcoins offline in an offline disconnected wallet from any network um, for added security, kind of like a bank. Think of it as a bank. While you generally keep only some of your money in the wallet, um, and uh, so then you store some in your bank. So for added protection, use Bitcoin's multiple uh, multi-signature feature that allows a transaction re to require multiple independent approvals to be spent. Spending some time on these steps can save you a ton of money. Another one, and I'll leave this link also, is I recommend Nano Ledger S. It's a hardware wallet. So Nano Ledger is just as secure as the other two hardware wallets. It is popular because it's relatively low price compared to its competitors and it is just as good. So being a smaller than uh, the other one, like Keep Key, is more portable. It's easier to carry around. It's really a hardware wallet. So it's a physical thing that comes at a very competitive price. So, so what else do I need to know on how to protect my addresses? Uh, protect your addresses, although your user identity behind the address remains anonymous. Bitcoin is the most public form of transaction with anyone on the network seeing your balances, log of transactions. And this is one of the reasons why you want to change Bitcoin addresses um, after each transaction that you make. So you can also use multiple wallets for different purposes that your balance and transaction remain private. So nobody will see that. A good way to think about that is, you know, a paid uh, Visa card. You might make that transaction, 
uh, online with that card, and then you reload it after that. So your confirmation score, as you, you receive a confirmation score after that transaction, and it takes about 10 minutes before you make that purchase. So different wallets have different readings. So um, one thing to remember about Bitcoin is study it. Just do a lot of studying and uh, leave your comments below and ask questions. I want to hear your questions and also uh, leave uh, comments about other videos. I'd like to do other videos for you that you request. And uh, so if you have questions, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up right now and subscribe to my channel and I'll help you get through this process because Bitcoin is a new process. Of course, there's hacking and scams with anything out there. But if you do it right, it can be a very profitable business. So um, again, leave your comments. I appreciate you watching this video. And look for my other videos. I got awesome videos. I've owned four restaurants. I've been in businesses, um, done a lot of different things. People are like, there's no way you've done all this. I'm going to leave a link below. If you're looking to get out of your nine to five job and it just sucks and you're tired of working for somebody else and making money for them, how about make money for yourself? Because that's what... Uh, the, the internet business is all about. There's so many opportunities out there and uh, I can help you get into digital media, uh, doing Facebook advertising, SEO or whatever, or I can even help you build your business online through blogging, through a lot of different features. So I'll leave a link. You can schedule a meeting with me. If you're interested, uh, understand there's an investment. So if you're not willing to invest in yourself, uh, don't do a meeting with me because I'd rather not uh, waste your time or my time. So I appreciate you watching this video and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.